Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin with day 254, September 10th, Amos chapter 6 and 7, Woes and Warnings. Overview. Israel has grown fat, apathetic, and proud, choking on its own luxury. God's verdict is fitting. Therefore, you will be the first to be led away as captives. Suddenly, all your parties will end. Chapter 6, verse 7. The prophet relates a series of visions in which God stays his hand of punishment repeatedly, but no more. The plumb line of his righteousness shows how far out of line the people have drifted, prompting Amos to report God's new resolve. I will no longer ignore all their sins. Chapter 7, verse 8. Chapter 6. Woe to the complacent. Verses 1 to 7. Chapter 6. Woe to the proud, verses 8 to 14. Violation of God's law, chapter 7. Three warnings of doom, visions of God's wrath, insight. Wine by the bowlful, Amos 6, 6. For the gluttonous people of God, an ordinary cup was not large enough, 6, 6. So they used enormous vessels like those customarily reserved for sacrificial purposes, Exodus 38, 3, and Zechariah 14, 20. Insight. Prayer changes things. Amos 7 verse 3 and chapter 6. Realizing Israel's utter sinfulness and impending punishment, Amos interceded and the Lord relented, not once but twice. See chapter 7 verse 3 and chapter 6. And this was not the only time someone prayed and God changed his plans. Read also about the intercession of Moses, Exodus 32 9 to 14. Hezekiah, Isaiah 38, 1-6, and Jonah 3.10. Insight. Fig-picking prophet. Amos 7.14. Amos was a shepherd and a fig farmer. 7.14. A religious and political outsider who was one of God's more unlikely candidates to be a prophet. How many other unlikely heroes from scripture can you remember? Don't forget to include the carpenter from Galilee. Amos 6. What sorrow awaits you who lounge in luxury in Jerusalem, and you who feel secure in Samaria? You are famous and popular in Israel, and people go to you for help. But go over to Kalna and see what happened there. Then go to the great city of Hamath, and down to the Philistine city of Gath. You are no better than they were, and look at how they were destroyed. You push away every thought of coming disaster, For your actions only bring the day of judgment closer. How terrible for you who sprawl on ivory beds and lounge on your couches, eating the meat of tender lambs from the flock and choice calves fattened in the stall. You sing trivial songs to the sound of the harp and fancy yourselves to be great musicians like David. You drink wine by the bowlful and perfume yourselves with fragrant lotions. You care nothing about the ruin of your nation. Therefore, you'll be the first to be led away as captives. Suddenly, all your parties will end. The sovereign Lord has sworn by his own name, and this is what the Lord God of heaven's army says. I despise the arrogance of Israel, and I hate their fortresses. I will give this city and everything in it to their enemies. If there are ten men left in one house, they will all die. And when a relative who is responsible to dispose of the dead goes into the house to carry out the bodies, he will ask the last survivor, is anyone else with you? When the person begins to swear no, by, he will interrupt and say, stop, don't even mention the name of the Lord. When the Lord gives the command, homes both great and small will be smashed to pieces. 
Can horses gallop over boulders? Can oxen be used to plow them? But that's how foolish you are when you turn justice into poison and the sweet fruit of righteousness into bitterness. And you brag about your conquest of Lodabar. You boast. Didn't we take Carnaim by our own strength? O oh, people of Israel, I am about to bring an enemy nation against you, says the Lord God of heaven's armies. They will oppress you throughout your land from Libo, Hamat in the north to the Arabah Valley in the south. Amos 7. A vision of locusts. The sovereign Lord showed me a vision. I saw him preparing to send a vast swarm of locusts over the land. This was after the king's share had been harvested from the fields and as the main crop was coming up. In my vision, the locusts ate every green plant in sight. Then I said, O sovereign Lord, please forgive us or we will not survive, for Israel is so small. So the Lord relented from this plan. I will not do it, he said. A vision of fire. Then the sovereign Lord showed me another vision. I saw him preparing to punish his people with a great fire. The fire had burned up the depths of the sea and was devouring the entire land. Then I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, please stop or we will not survive, for Israel is so small. Then the Lord relented from this plan too. I will not do that either, said the sovereign Lord. A vision of a plumb line. Then he showed me another vision. I saw the Lord standing beside a wall that had been built using a plumb line. He was using a plumb line to see if it was still straight. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? I answered, a plumb line. And the Lord replied, I will test my people with this plumb line. I will no longer ignore all their sins. The pagan shrines of your ancestors will be ruined and the temples of Israel will be destroyed. I will bring the dynasty of King Jeroboam to a sudden end. Amos and Amaziah. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is hatching a plot against you right here on your very doorstep. What he is saying is intolerable. He is saying Jeroboam will soon be killed, and the people of Israel will be sent away into exile. Then Amaziah sent orders to Amos. Get out of here, you prophet. Go on back to the land of Judah and earn your living by prophesying there. Don't bother us with your prophecies here in Bethel. This is the king's sanctuary and the national place of worship. But Amos replied, I'm not a professional prophet, and I was never trained to be one. I am just a shepherd, and I take care of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord called me away from my flock and told me, Go and prophesy to my people in Israel. Now then listen to this message from the Lord. You say, don't prophesy against Israel. Stop preaching against my people. But this is what the Lord says. Your wife will become a prostitute in this city, and your sons and daughters will be killed. Your land will be divided up, and you yourself will die in a foreign land. And the people of Israel will certainly become captives in exile, far from their homeland. My Daily Walk a man works double shifts and weekends so that his overtime income will cover the payments on his new camper and boat. But when vacation time comes, he's too exhausted to drive to the lake. A wealthy executive relates how, as a young man, he recklessly neglected his health to make millions, and now, later in life, he finds himself spending the millions he earned to regain the health he lost. These stories illustrate the subtle effects of materialism. The sickness begins with our desire to own things, but all too often those things turn around and begin to own us. Luxury-loving Israel was so owned by its possessions and materialistic lifestyle that God had become the previous owner, enjoying things from God had replaced enjoying God himself. You may probably think of your house, your car, your boat, your whatever as being owned by me, but never forget that it's also actually loaned by God. Would it now be a good time to consider a transfer of ownership? Close your eyes and you will see everything you actually possess. And that's so true. That's all for today, my friends. It was great reading along with you. Have a great day and keep up the good work. God bless and I will see you tomorrow. Lord willing, peace.